Hello there everyone, it's Kathy Champion. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am an independent Stamping Up demonstrator here in Gastonia, North Carolina, and I'd like to take this moment to welcome you to my channel. Thank you so much for stopping by and spending a little time with me. Uh, this is my host code for the month of February, and what this host code does, if you use this host code and spend a $50 purchase before shipping and handling, uh, or shipping and tax, um, um, you will receive a free gift from me at the end of the month. The gifts are usually mailed out the first to second week of the month. I usually try to get them out the first week, depending on how busy things are. But um, you will receive a free gift from me. We are still in what is called our celebration campaign. So through the 28th of this month, uh, our celebration campaign, and that same $50 that you spend will also qualify you for a free um, gift out of the celebration catalog and that's this little catalog right here and everything in this catalog is totally free this campaign ran between uh, January 5th and February the 28th so we are heading into almost the end of this this is a beautiful pack of 12 by 12 paper that is free with a $50 purchase the Darlin Donkeys is free with a $50 purchase. Um, the uh, Approaching Perfection, which is a really cute birthday stamp set, is free with a $50 purchase. The Oso Ombre Designer Series Paper that is 48 sheets of 6x6, absolutely free with a $50 purchase. Corner Bouquet, free with a $50 purchase. Heal Your Heart, which is a beautiful sentiment stamp set, free with a $50 purchase. Uh, Flowers and Field Designer Series Paper, this is another 12x12, 12 12, absolutely free with a, 12, with a $50 purchase. A Touch of Ink, this is free with a $100 purchase. This is a, what they consider a Tier 2 um, uh, stamp set. This is actually a two-step stamp set. But if you spend any amount of money in my st online store this month, uh, anything from $5 up to whatever the purchase might be, your name will go into a random drawing that will be drawn out for, the, for this um, stamp set. So that is an incentive that I'm giving away as a, as a drawing to one lucky winner. But you can receive this for free with a $100 purchase. The, these are the only two items that are a hundred dollar purchase that are free. This is a stamp set called Berry Blessings and a 12 by 12 pack of designer series paper and you get both of these for a hundred dollars. And then we also have the host reward which is Punch Party and this is absolutely free if you hold a, um, a, a party and you spend up you have sales up to $300. Or if you just have a big shopping list and you shop for yourself in the total of $300, not only will you get this for free, you will get six items out of this catalog for free. Six $50 or two of the $100 and two $50. Anyway, ever how it adds up, that's what you'll receive. Also, if you join Stamping Up between now and the end of February, uh, you will also get this um, five packs of Stamping Up Designer Series paper. These are brand new designs, not yet even in our catalog. These will not come out until the new catalog comes out in, I believe, May or June. So, these are in addition to the $125 worth of product that you can pick out of either the annual catalog or the mini catalog. So you have your choice to pick out of either or catalog and get those um, five packs of paper. So I just wanted to kind of go over that with everybody since it is closing in to the end of the month. Also I want to let you know that Paper Pumpkin has just opened back up on the 10th for next month's um, uh, Paper Pumpkin uh, 
card kit. So if you're interested in signing up for Paper Pumpkin, uh, I will have the link in the video below where you can just click on that link, go right over, and you can sign up from there. You can choose how you want to receive your Paper Pumpkin. You can sign up for month to month. You can pay for three months, six months, or a year and get a bit of a discount. So it's totally up to you. Okay, enough of that. Let's go ahead and move on to what we're going to talk about today. And what I want to discuss today is something called mirror stamping and if you are if you're new to paper crafting that might be a foreign term but let me explain say for example you wanted to put an image on a piece of cardstock let's lay a piece of cardstock out here and let's say that you had and I got this little stamp set here my little zany zebras this is such a cute little stamp set let's say for an example that you wanted this one but you wanted him facing in this direction well you can't very well get him facing in that direction because he stamps in this direction but we can do image stamping image reversal and I'm going to show y'all how to do that now we will need to bring in some tools in order to make this happen one is our silicone craft mat this thing is amazing now most of the time you see people using this for putting their adhesives down because glue doesn't stick to it any of the adhesives even hot glue it all peels right off of it it washes up in the sink very nicely so it's a great little thing to have in your craft room but I'm going to bring in my Stamparatus. Now the Stamparatus tool is a very handy tool to have in your stamp room. The difference with the Stamparatus is you get two plat uh, platform plates. When I say two plates, I'm talking you have the ability to stamp this way and this way. And you can also turn these over and have stamps on the other side so you have continuous stamping so if you're working with images like the two or three or four step stamp sets you can very easily uh, do a continuous stamping by putting one of your images on one side one on the other and you can line those up however you need to but today we are going to talk about reverse imaging and I'm going to take one plate off because we don't need that. And I am going to take and put this stamp set under here. I find that a stamp case, let me move this over just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. A stamp case makes this nice and flat where you have a nice even surface to um, ink up. Now with your Stamparatus, you will get this little foam mat and this is when you're using photopolymer stamp sets you need that little extra cushioning it's sort of like having the stamp and pierce mat but it's having one for your stamparatus uh, and it's not quite as thick as that one so it works perfectly in here now if you want to you can upgrade to this uh, imperial uh, measurement uh, pad and this wipes clean it's it has a plastic um, sort of a, a plastic rubberized but it has the foam underneath and this has your measurements on it so you can still measure because when you put this one on here you lose your measurements but this does still work it's not as good as this and this is a small fee I believe this is like six dollars to add this one to your purchase it does not come with this but we're not going to need that today because the stamp that we're using is a cling stamp so when you when you work with a cling stamp you won't need to use that you will just use the base so what I'm going to do is I am going to take my silicone craft mat and I'm just going to put that down and I'm going to put my little zebra right there and then I'm going to go ahead and pick that up and grab my Memento um, black ink. And I am actually going to ink this up um, and stamp it on my silicone mat. And I'll show you exactly how that's going to work. We're just going to ink this up pretty liberally like that. And remember, using the Stamparatus, we can always stamp again.
So that is the most wonderful thing about using a stamp positioning tool. Now that does look like we need a little bit darker image because we're going to transfer that onto our paper. And you might say, well, how is that going to do a reverse image? Well, just hang tight and you're going to see the magic behind this and just how wonderful this works. Now, if you want to, if you want to ink it yet again, you ink it until you get the depth of color that you feel like you need for your image. So I think, I think that three times will be plenty for me. Yeah, that looks nice and dark. So I'm going to move that off. And I am going to set my Stamparatus over here. And I'm going to bring my piece of paper. And I'm just going to lay it right here where you can see what I'm doing. And I'm going to get it lined up on my, on my mat so that I have a nice even uh, place. And then I'm going to take this and turn it upside down. And I want him to go right about here. Maybe right there. And I'm just going to lay it down. And I'm not going to rub. I'm just going to take my fingers and I'm going to press. Now some people take um, a stamp block and put over top of it and press it. I find that I get just as good at imaging by just pressing against the uh, image. Now if you remember back in the day, you could do this with what was called mirror block um, stamps, but they were black. Um, sort of a black rubberized type um, uh, material and you couldn't see through them. But you can see through the silicone craft mat which makes it wonderful for doing mirror imaging. So once I press that to my satisfaction, I'm just going to peel it up and look at the magic. There my stamp is on there beautifully, perfect in every way and my little zebra is there. Now I do have residue ink on here and you might say, well what do you do about that? I just use some of my Stampin' Mist. You could probably even clean this up with water. But I just take a little bit of Stampin' Mist and spray on it. And then I'll grab my microfiber cloth and just wipe it off. Just like that. And it wipes that ink completely off, cleans it up, and it's all ready to go for your next uh, stamping. Now, let's say, for example, that we want to, let's bring the Stamparatus back over, and let's say we want to put that little image right over here. So, I'm going to use the um, Stampin' Mist again, and I'm just going to spray a little bit on my, uh, my little zebra and clean him up so that I can move him. I don't want any residual ink on him because I don't want to transfer it to my paper. So I'm just going to give that a good rub and make sure that I've got all that ink off. And then I'm going to peel him up and I'm going to sit him back down here like so. And now I'm going to pick that back up and ink it up again. And you're going to see the difference in the mirror image versus the flat stamping. And this is such a wonderful technique when you want two of your little characters looking at each other. Um, you, perhaps you want a flower that's going in the opposite direction. Um, this is always a perfect way. Now if you notice, this one's a little darker than that one. So what I'll do is I'll just ink this up one more time. Just like that. And just press down on it. And there we go. We've got them both about the same uh, intensity and color both of them looking at each other, and it was done so easily, just like that. I'm going to let that dry for a minute, and I think while we're doing this technique, I'm going to show you some other things that you can do. Um, when A lot of times we think about you know, our little mirror imaging being our little characters like this, like the Zany Zebra, um, the Darling Donkey, which is a celebration item. I'm going to go ahead and stick this back into my stamp set. Um, let's look. Here is one 
that with the little dog. This is another one that is great for using with the mirror image because you can, the kitty cat would be a great one because you could put them facing each other or say you wanted this cat to be facing that way and this dog to be facing this way rather than the cat over here and the dog over here. You could switch them around by doing mirror imaging. So let me show you another instance and that this again is a photopolymer so we are going to do our little dog first and I'm going to grab another piece of cardstock and even with dies you can cut cut them out with dies but you cannot change the orientation of the of the way they are facing each other. So this is the only way that you can get that technique is by doing the mirror imaging. So again, I'm going to I want to make sure I'm not getting the little stamping up logo in my way. I'm just going to stick that right there in that top corner. And I'm going to set my little dog down right here. And let's go ahead and pick him up and then ink him up. This is just, um, this is something that I think every stamper needs to learn. Uh, this will make your projects, um, it will just give you a whole new dimension in your stamping. Because once you're able to do this type of stamping and switch your images around like this, you will be surprised at how many different ways you can use this to your advantage. So you, you don't have to have a Stamparatus to do this, but it does make it easier. You do need the silicone craft mat, and the, the good thing about this is, as you can see, I am having to stamp it more than once to get a good image on there. So I would, I would recommend um, having a, some type of stamp positioning tool in order to be able to do this and get it in the same spot every time. So, and there's lots of different stamping um, apparatuses, but I will, I will have to say, and I have used a lots of different uh, stamping tools. I have used the um, Tim Holtz and I've used the Misty. I love the versatility of this particular one. Now I'm going to take my piece of paper again and I'm going to get it nice and straight on my mat. And then I'm going to take my puppy dog and I'm going to put him right about there. And I'm just going to lay him down. And again, I'm not going to rub, I'm just going to press. You want to just press all along those lines, making sure that you don't miss a spot. Pardon the pun, we could call him Spot, but he doesn't have spots, but he's such a cute little dog. And we can color these images too once we uh, let them dry and, you know, make a card. I mean, this is, the, this is the fun part of doing this. So once we get that mashed down really good, let's go ahead and peel it up. And there we go. Another beautiful image, mirrored image that will make your uh, crafting go to a new level. So I love that. And now we're going to do the kitty cat, the one that wasn't facing in the right direction. And we're going to put that one so that it is facing in the right direction. So I'm going to clean this off again. And let's bring this over here so it can be drying. And I'm going to get my Stamparatus back over and let's put that back up in the corner and I am going to go ahead and clean my puppy dog. And let's go ahead and put the puppy back into my stamp set. And let's grab the kitty. Now this kitty is facing in the wrong direction because you can see if we put it there, the cat would be facing away from the dog. As you can see, the cat would be facing that way, but we want the cat to face the dog. So let's do a mirror image of our kitty cat. 
So let's put the kitty right there. Pick it up. I've got a little bit of black ink on my Stamparatus, but you know that never bothers anything because that part doesn't hit your paper. Another great thing about the Stamparatus. And you have to think of your Stamparatus as just a huge stamp block. And it is so great to have um, something that you can stamp with with accuracy the first time every time. You can position your stamps on here and it is just an absolute gem um, of a tool for getting all of your images exactly where you want them. I'm going to bring the stamp set back under here so that I have an even surface for inking this up. That helps quite a bit. And let's put that back down on top. And we'll just press, press, press. And maybe one more time. It seems like about three times of inking gives me just about the um, depth of color that I like. So that looks really good. So I'm going to move that over. Move this over. Let's bring our cardstock back over. And then what we're going to do is we're going to hold this over top of our paper or our cardstock. I'm going to get it nice and even again. So I'm hopefully getting it as straight as possible. And I want the kitty cat to go right about here. So I'm just going to lay that down and press. Just make sure you press every line, all the little whiskers, her little ears. I always call cats her and dogs he, and you know that it's not the case. <laughs> But now we have these, they were both facing in the opposite direction, now we have them facing each other. And how cute is that? So it just, it, it is just a win-win to be able to do stuff like this. So let's try one more image. Let's do, let's do um, a flowering something or other. Let's see if we can find a pretty flower. How about this one right here? Let's say we wanted this going up our paper on one side and on the opposite on the other side. So let's let's take this piece right here. Again, this is another photopolymer. I mean, not photopolymer, but um, um, oh my goodness, <laughs> cling stamps. So, and this is one of my all-time favorite um, stamp sets because that. That flower right there is gorgeous, and y'all have seen me use that over and over, and I love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my Stamparatus over one more time, and I do want to clean up my, my little kitty cat and get this put back where it belongs. So let's just clean that off really good. And you don't have to use the um, stamp cleaner. You could use your, um, um, you could use one of your uh, Stampin' Chamois. That this would clean the stamp set just as well. But I went ahead and grabbed my um, Stampin' Mist because sometimes my chamois is too wet, just like right now, and it would make it way wetter than what I wanted it to be. So. I just grabbed my Stampin' Mist and my little um, microfiber cloth, and that worked really well. So I'm going to just place this back in here, just like that, and I'm going to move that stamp set. Now I'm going to bring this one over and put it under here, and I'm going to bring my silicone craft mat, and I'm going to stamp this maybe right here in the middle. And let's go ahead and pick that up. Grab my Memento Tuxedo Black ink, and I'm going to ink it up. Just like that. Stamp it down. 
And let's ink it again. Looks like we need a little bit more concentration of ink right there in the middle. Oh, that's looking good. One more time. And I'm going to rub it up and down just to make sure I'm getting a good image. Very, very nice. So now I'm going to move this out of my way. Oops. Don't want to move the whole thing. That's the good thing about this, this Stamparatus too. It has really, really nice rubber um, feet on the bottom that makes it so easy uh, to not skid on you. As you can see, it did not skid. It moved my work surface, but it did not skid at all. So now I'm going to bring this back over, and I want this one right here right about there so I'm going to set that down and press just press that ink into the paper just like that and peel it off how pretty how pretty now we're going to take our Stamparatus bring it back over and we are going to clean it. Making sure that I get all of that ink off. And now I'm gonna set my stamp right about here this is going to show you how we can have the stamp turning in toward each other rather than one being out and one in so now I'm going to ink that up one more time and you know I didn't put the ink stamp back under and again, this is really a super, super helpful tip just to make sure you've got that underneath there. It gives you that nice, even, firm area to stamp or to ink up. So there we go. And look at the beauty of that. Both of these are going in. Now, when we had stamped them one here and one here, they both would have been facing outward. Now, they frame this area beautifully, and you've got them going in both directions, one coming in and one going in. So, again, that shows how your florals will work. Now, before we go any further, I've got to do one more because I am in love with this particular stamp set as are so many of you because um, it has been one of the most popular celebration items that there is. So I'm hoping that everybody that wanted one of those got one during the celebration campaign. And that is the Darling Donkey. The Darling Donkeys are just that. They are so super cute. So I'm going to grab my darling donkeys and look at those they are absolutely divine this little fella here has stolen my heart for some reason he reminds me of eeyore especially and look at this yes i stamped a whole bunch of them out and cut them colored them and these are all ready and i got different colors i even did a purple one that looked like eeyore i could not help myself <laughs> I just think they're adorable. So I'm going to bring this back in. Let's see which side. Is that my dirty side? I think it is. I'm going to clean that off, making sure both sides are clean. Yeah, and you can just clean this up so simply and so easy. And like I told you, this mat here is the same way. You can just take your stamp cleaner and wipe this off if you get ink on it and it cleans off just as easily as this one does and that makes it super nice because I don't know if y'all are like me but I love to keep my um, 
my tools, my craft room supplies nice and clean. It's just one of my little pet peeves and uh, one of those things I just have to do. So I'm going to put my little Darling Donkeys under here. And I'm going to go ahead and pick this little guy up. So super cute. He is just adorable. And I'm going to ink this up. And I'm going to stamp that down just like that. And I'm going to come back and ink it again. And stamp it down again. And maybe one more time just to make sure we get a good inking. that's sufficient. I'm going to go ahead while I'm here and I'm going to clean off my donkey. I wish I had thought about doing this for um, Valentine's Day because how cute would this have been with some little hearts going up between our two old donkeys. I think it would have been precious. I didn't think about it at the time that I was doing my Valentine's, so it's okay. There's always next Valentine's Day, right? So I'm going to grab yet another piece of cardstock. I always keep a bunch of these cut just for reasons like this. Now I'm going to move this out of my way so I have room to get this down where I need it. So let's move Stamparatus and I'm going to bring this over and again I'm going to line that up on my work surface and I'm going to take my little donkey and I want him to go right about here. So I'm going to sit him down and then just press him in just like we've been doing before. Same principle. And this is just how simple and easy this is. And the reason I wanted to do more than one, because I wanted to go over this process with you several times so that you would get it. I know a lot of times, even for myself, as a seasoned crafter, um, I can watch a video. And sometimes if it goes really fast, it's like it's shoom, over my head. So sometimes I think it's nice if a demonstrator or a YouTuber takes the time to go over and show something more than once. It just really helps. Look at that. Is that not simply adorable? So now I'm going to bring my Stamparatus back in and I'm going to set my little donkey right about here. And I'm going to pick, pick him up bring that back over under it and we're going to go ahead and ink it and stamp it we might do it one more time. It looks nice and dark, but I want to make sure it's looking as good as the other one. There we go. Are they not adorable? I mean, I mean really folks, look at that. I love those. I think they are so cute. So, so cute. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my steam while I'm here and take that off. I'm going to go ahead and just wipe this down while I'm here. I always try to make sure that my tools are clean before I put them away. Just um, a little, it's a, it's a good little rule of thumb to get into. So that way you never have to worry about pulling out your tools and then being, you know, dirty. Um, 
just not quite what you want them to be. And one thing you want to do, if you have one of these stamparatuses, you never want to put this plate on and try to close it. One plate and close it, but see what happens. And if you try to force that, it will snap. So I just lay the other one over top. But I can see where this one's smudged. So while I've got it out, I'm going to, and I got cleaner on my cloth, I'm just going to go ahead and give that a good little wipe too. And now I can put this away and know that my Stamparatus, and see what I mean about it clinging? It really does cling. It comes with two magnets, and I covered mine with washi tape because these things are super strong, and when I first got mine, they clinked together and both of them broke. So I put them back together with washi tape and put a little handle on them. So that's um, a good little rule. So if you buy one of these, be extremely careful. I would suggest to keep one magnet under and one on top because if they clink together, you're going to have you're definitely going to have breakage. All right, let's bring this little guy over. And I'm going to grab a piece of scrap paper. I'm just going to take a sheet of this. This is actually made to go in the Stamparatus, but I use these real often just as a stamp, uh, as a piece to go under my work surface because it's it's small and it just works really well. So I'm going to put this away and get it out of my way. And I want to go ahead and color my donkeys. And I'm going to use the um, Smoky Slate. This is my light and dark. Okay, so I've got my my dark. I want to do the dark first. What I want to do is, I'm, and I think I'm going to start out with this one. Um, I'm going to come in on this little line right there. Right there where the legs meet. Maybe just a little bit around the face. Maybe up here where the little mane is sticking up. Um, maybe the top side of the ear and the little hooves. Now I'm just going to go in with my dark and hit those spots. Maybe right here on the end of the tail. And I'm just going to concentrate on one donkey at a time. So then I'm going to come back with my light and I'm just going to blend. Blend that in. And then just start to color and pull that color in with the lighter. These um, Stampin' Blends make coloring just about flawless. They can make anybody look like a professional. So if you haven't tried our Stampin' Blends, you might want to pick up a, a set. They come in a two pack, you get a light and a dark, and uh, you know. Very few of us can afford to go out and buy all of these at one time, but you could order a couple of colors a month until you get your um, your base colors, and then add, uh, you know, just add as you go, and you'll be surprised how fast you will build your collection. Now, I l purposely left some light spots in there because I wanted it to look a little bit lighter. Now I'm going to grab my light petal pink and I'm going to do his little, I guess his little um, face, mouth, whatever you call this area. But I think that light pink just gives it such a neat color. And I'm going to come in and do this one as well. And this one I'm going to do a different color. I think I want this one to be crumb cake. So I'm going to grab my light and dark crumb cake, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to come in with the darker, and I'm just going to go up into the little mane. Um, and probably across the ears right here. 
And I'm pretty much going to do the same thing with this one as I did with the with the gray. Uh, I'm going to do the hooves, the end of the tail, and probably a little bit across the back, and maybe right here on the leg, maybe a little bit down the belly, and a little bit around the face, like that. So then I'm going to come back with the white crumb cake and we are just going to blend all of this in. So I'm just going to start right there. And come up here, blending that out. And the same here. And then I'm going to come right in this area and I'm just going to start doing little circles. And what I'm doing is I'm pulling this darker color down into the lighter. And what that does, it gives an appearance of a shadow. And that's what we want. We want that look of a little bit of a shadow. Not a lot, but just a little bit. And we're going to go across the tail right there. And now that one is colored. And how cute are those? I'm going to come right back in here and just blend that out a little bit more. A little bit more color right there. And I think that one is, this is good to go. Now, if you want to stamp some other images around this, maybe some grass where it looks like they're sitting in the grass, um, maybe even do some clouds up around the top. Um, I have a little cloud template that I made. And we could use our blending brushes. And how cute would that be to put in some little clouds up here? So let's do that. Let me grab the blue blending brush and I'm going to grab my balmy blue. And you can see I have used this one quite a bit. Uh, and all I did to make this is I just took some circles and punched out different size circles. I glued them together to form myself um, a bit of a uh, cloud. So I'm going to start right there. I'm going to come up here and tap off. And then I'm just going to start swirling that ink. And I'm going to hold this really tight while I'm doing this because I don't want this to move. I'm going to let that one come down on that side. And if you want to pick up a little bit more ink, you can. But always tap off so you don't get too much color in one area and just keep swirling. You want to build layer on layer of color. And you'll be surprised, it might not look like you're doing much here, but when you lift that up and move it down, you'll see that coloring of, of, um, of ink that has been put down. So we're going to do that again, and I flipped it around that time. And this time I might not go as dark. I might do this one a little lighter. Like that. And lift it up and see how you're getting the formation of clouds now. And this, this does such a good job of putting down your cloud formation. Pretty. I'm going to turn it and I'm going to kind of go sideways here, maybe off the side like that. And we're going to do a little bit darker.
And then what you can do after you get your cloud formations like you want them, is you can come back in and very gently just go back and forth like that and just kind of blend that together so that it looks like it's sky all the way down. And that will give you um, just a more even look in your sky. Just like that. And this is also a good way to clean off the excess ink off your brush and, and get a really nice effect in the process. You can see how that makes it look. Now those clouds have a nice formation and you've got sort of a blue sky all the way across. So that gives us our blue sky under our, under our donkeys. And we could come back in and stamp some grass or maybe even some bushes, you know, some greenery. And I didn't even think to pull a stamp set that had something like that in it, but I am looking for something. Um, I don't have anything over here that looks like grass, but I'll tell you what we'll do. I will find something and we will stamp something on this and we will actually work this into a card on a later video. But what I wanted to go over with and the basis of this video was actually the technique of Miro stamping. And as you can see, we have several different aspects of our mirrored stamping. and. The, these are techniques that you will be able to use over and over. Let me pull these over so they're in frame a little bit better. But as you can see, any of these can be colored and you could actually use these on, on card fronts. And like I said, we will finish these off. Maybe in our next video, I will finish this one off and we will work on these other as well. And I think that they will make a gorgeous card for different occasions. I can see this one being a happy birthday. I can see this one being a friend card. This one also a friend card. This one could either be a sympathy or a get well card or a thinking of you card. So we will definitely come back together and work these cards out. But today, the word of the day is mirror stamping. And I hope that you have learned a new technique and I hope this is something that you can actually bring, put forth in your craft room. And if you're interested in purchasing the uh, silicone craft mat, um, the uh, these are very inexpensive. I think they're like um, five or six dollars. Uh, the stamp apparatus is more of an investment, but it is a and it is a tool that will last you the rest of your life in your crafting. Um, room and it is so versatile and you can use it in so many ways. We'll touch more on the Stamparatus and two-step stamping and things like that a little bit later. But I want to thank you again for tuning in, for being a part of my crafty family. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so. Just click that subscribe button, ring that bell, and you can uh, choose how you want to be notified, how often you want to be notified, and I would love to have you be a part of our uh, YouTube family. And uh, as I always say in closing, let everything that you do and say bring glory to our Father in Heaven. He's so worthy of our honor and our praise. And until we craft again, may God bless and keep you. I love you all very much. Bye-bye.